your behind the scenes look at Big Bang Theory, your backstage big get. Einstein had them, Marilyn admired them. We're talking brains, and we mean big brains. Oh, hi. 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 So is it really that far-fetched that a blonde bombshell like Penny here would be attracted to one of these two charmers? Well, uh, oh, welcome to the building. Oh, thank you. Maybe we can have coffee sometime. Oh, great. 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 <laughs> Actress Kaylee Kuko doesn't think so. This beauty has dated geeks. He was more, I wouldn't say geek, he was so smart. So that was very sexy. But he did wear glasses and he kind of wore like vintage clothes. I mean, that's, that's sexy. I'd rather have that than some big buff guy, you know, any day. Well, your ex-boyfriend sends his regards and I think the rest is fairly self-explanatory. <laughs> he can make me laugh, I'll be all over you. It all comes together here on the Warner Brothers lot. It's here that each week the new jokes are tried and tested and cut and sculpted. The crew always laughs to help the actors with their timing, but if the crew really laughs, chances are the audience will too. <laughs> And that's a cut. It takes four and a half days of intense rehearsal and take after take after take. And action. To get the chemistry spot on. This is, in a way, to acting what speed dating is to dating. You've got to have a relationship really fast. Hello. Enchanté, mademoiselle. You really have to be ready, because they will come out at any moment, change a line, change a, a, anything, a position, dialogue. It's You have to be ready to be on your toes. Okay. Just off the frustration, you go, a anything you want. Anything. Any costume. Any, any costume anything. at all. <laughs> the last two lines, anything you want, and walk off on any costume. Any costume okay. at all. Right. Okay. And you have to look like you're having a great Do it right. time while you're doing it. <laughs> Most of the time, I'm okay with there. Sometimes you just have like a brain fart, literally. I'm like, I, I have no idea what he just said, even though he was in my face telling me, like one of the writers, I've gone, gone. I'm like, I need that again. Sorry. We're appreciating today, but we're in front of a live audience. You even have to, have to be more ready because they might think, they'll tell you if the line is funny, literally. And if it's not, you know the whole crew is coming in to start rewriting the entire scene. So we've had a couple times, very few, where they've literally changed the whole scene in three minutes and we just have to do it. Try it again. Here we go. TV, film, D&D, manga, Greek gods, Roman gods, Norse gods. Anything you want, okay? <laughs> Any costume you want. <laughs> there to make sure the scene is the best it can be are two veteran writers and executive producers, Two and a Half Men's Chuck Lorre and Dharma and Greg's Bill Prady. It's kind of an experience thing. You kind of learn over time. Whether it's the actor's delivery, the, the, how, the, how the scene is uh, choreographed where the actor, you know, physically where they are, and, and, and then you have to be honest enough to say these okay. words stink <laughs> and go back into the uh, woodshed and fix them. You, you, know? may, you may not go there first. <laughs> you may, yeah, you may. yeah, there's <laughs> a certain, you know, there's a certain, writers have a, sort of, are inclined to want to believe that their words are all, you know, beloved and wonderful, but that's not true. What is true is that the chemistry between these actors and these characters works like a charm. Like in this scene between Penny and her brainy neighbors, Leonard, played by Roseanne's Johnny Galecki, and Sheldon, portrayed by Jim Parsons. This looks like some serious stuff. Leonard, did you do this? Actually, that's my work. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, there's just some quantum mechanics with a little string theory doodling around the edges. That part there, that's just a joke. It's a spoof of the Born Oppenheimer approximation. <laughs> oh, so you're like one of those beautiful mind genius guys. Yeah. <laughs> this is really impressive. I have a board. If you like boards, this is my board. There's a sweetness to how Penny views these guys, and it's it's people who you know who don't normally interact, but they interact here because you know for the simplest of reasons, which is physical proximity. Yeah. We find, you know we were learning as we go too. I mean, one of the first things we realized was their innocence. You know, and it's really endearing. They. they they have no guile. They exactly, you know, deceit and, and maneuvering and trickery, it's just not part of the vocabulary, which, which makes you root for them. Sit next to me. No, I sit there. <laughs> What's the difference? What's the difference? Here we go. There is a slight cleanliness bent to him, but it really all stems from his obsession with the, the, the theoretical process, putting things, here's A plus B will equal C. That woman in there is not going to have sex with you. Well, I'm not trying to have sex with her. 
Oh, good. Then you won't be disappointed. <laughs> what makes you think she wouldn't have sex with me? I'm a male and she's a female. Yes, but not of the same species. <laughs> there is always a chance in love, but he doesn't understand that. That doesn't make any sense. It all needs to fit into the the equation. The equation being, raise some nerdy Whoa. brainiacs to their square roots, add a hot blonde to the nth power, and it all equals some pretty funny stuff. Hi. What are you supposed to be? Me? Okay. Um, I'll give you a hint. Meow. <laughs> a choo-choo train? It's close. Meow. I'm the Doppler effect. <laughs> Which, and I know what this means, it is the perceived change of frequency of a wave due to movement that, depending on the relative, the relation of the, the hearer, if it's a sound wave, the hearer to the wave, such as, um, it would be like a race car when they go next to you, you know, by you on NASCAR, like, Meow. or um, uh, an ambulance as it goes by the way it changes. <laughs> Wait till you see this. It's fantastic. <laughs> to make it all even more fun than a Mensa convention, Sheldon and Leonard have some friends like Howard and Rajesh. What Howard might lack in his hip coefficient, he makes up for with confidence. Hi there. <laughs> if that's a working stethoscope, maybe you'd like to hear my heart skip a beat. No thanks. No, seriously, you can. I have transient idiopathic arrhythmia. <laughs> My character's a little more armed with the uh, romance and the pickup lines, and he's sort of ready. He's got like a, you know, a, a repository of, uh, of, of just ammunition ready to go for the girls. So, you guys work with Leonard and Sheldon at the university? Raj, on the other hand, is infinitely shy, especially around pretty girls. I'm sorry, do you speak English? Oh, he speaks English, he just can't speak to women. Unlike the actor who plays him. <laughs> look at this. This is... You look like a god. I know, I, yeah, I, I walk around, people are like bowing down to me. It's really difficult being me right now. Good, that's a cut. At the end of this day of shooting, it all comes back to the chemistry between some world-class geniuses and the woman around whom their world revolves. I don't know what your odds are in the world as a whole, but as far as the population of this car goes, you're a veritable Mac Daddy. I like to believe that every genre, every type of woman would be attracted to these guys because they're funny and smart and good looking. They're the best looking nerds in the world, you know I mean? You can't get better than that. 